Hey guys, I'm Seth Parker. Today we're working on the DOT fiber aerial cutover. If you want to learn more about our fiber construction business and how we splice and how we do all these things, stick around. What we're doing here is, it's a DOT project. They're basically redoing an intersection here. Parker FiberNet is attached to Georgia Power poles. Georgia Power had to come in and move a lot of their existing poles so that the new road could come through. Therefore, we have to come through and move all of our infrastructure onto Georgia Power's new poles. So here at Parker, we do both types of utility construction. We do overhead construction and underground construction. We nowadays like to do mainly underground construction if we can, but a lot of this was original fiber cable that dad put up many, many years ago. And so we still have customers on that cable. We've switched a lot of them over to our underground facilities, but we still have some overhead facilities. So in order to stay in the right of way and stay in good graces with the DOT, we have to you know, obviously maintain that and keep it looking good. A couple of differences are with the underground, it's a little bit safer, so it's not you know, as subject to wind damage or storm damage, or if a car was to hit a power pole and knock it over, it would also take out our stuff. And so, we would rather be underground because then you're, the only real hazard of it breaking is somebody else digging into it and breaking it. We would rather do everything underground when we can, but we still do have some overhead stuff, and so we just maintain it and keep it up to speed. We do it in a couple of different stages. So the first stage is we come through and hang all the strand. And the strand, sometimes called messenger cable, is the steel strength that actually holds the fiber cable up. And then we come through and hang the fiber cable up. And then the next event is to remove the old existing fiber that's there. And so in order to do that, we have to do a cutover, which is what we're doing tonight. So right now we've got two bucket trucks set up. What they're doing is we're essentially getting the slack for the cutover. So the guy here in this bucket truck is gonna cut everything, the strand and the fiber. And then what that's gonna do is, right above his head is the new stuff. All we done there was we just delashed our old fiber. It's all gonna be cut. And then all of this old, all the way to the hospital, is coming down. So when he cuts the strand and the fiber here, it'll drop down and you see it how the new stuff's already tailed out going into the splicing trailer. When he cuts that, we'll basically tail that down and so from this point back will be old stuff, and from this point forward will be new stuff. And so this is basically where the transition happens from old to new. And so he's gonna be attaching the old strand up to the new attachment point, and he's gonna cut it so that we have enough slack so that the fiber can actually come, touch the ground, put it in the trailer, you know, and then once he gets done splicing, then we'll actually take it back up and relash it to the a new strand that's there. Our fiber splicer Dalton is set up on this cable. We've put up a 288 cable to replace the three existing cables, which consist of a 96 count and two 24 counts. Um, that's just to have future flexibility if we, if we ever needed it. He's gonna prep this 288 cable. We sent out a notice to all of our customers on this cable that we would cut it tonight at nine. So at nine o'clock, we'll cut the existing cable all of our customers will go down until we splice this in and then go down there and splice the other end. So I went ahead and went and prepped in this 288 ribbon. All I need is the first three tubes because it's six, six ribbons per tube. And I just threw them in this splice tray right here. I'm splicing a 96 count and uh, two 24 counts. Once they get in here, I'll prep it in here and burn it up to this uh, 288 ribbon. And you can see this right here, it's just 12 fibers. I'll ribbonize that other because it's loose too, and I'll ribbonize it and splice it up. This trailer right here, it's a six by 10. I had a seven by 12, a little bit too big. It's just me in here, so I don't need a seven by 12 trailer. I have my little splice trailer right here. A little fold out for my splicer set up on here. It's everything I need. I got outlets right here for charging, all my tools. I got my tool bucket right here. I don't need anything else. You don't have to go spend $30,000 on a trailer. trailer. You can spend 15 and have everything you need. I uh, kind of built it myself. I got a trailer built for me and then I just put in the tables and everything for it. I started off with uh, David doing underground work and aerial work and then uh, I always wanted to spot so I jumped right into it and 
never look back. I love it. He'll splice all the cables, so with the 96 and the 244, so there'll still be free cables on that 288. Once he starts this process of the cut over, we'll then start taking down all the existing fiber that's on the old Georgia power poles. And all we do there is just roll it up on this wood spool here so that we can uh, then just dispose of it later. We don't try to keep it or salvage any of that. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments. Dad will read that. I'm not reading that. And like and do all that other nonsense. Hang the fiber cable, lash the fiber cable to the strand, which is putting the... Hey guys. Which is putting the... Uh... Mm-hmm.